Hello everyone. In this video, we will see about Glide Ajax API. So this is the most commonly asked question in beginners interview as well as experienced interview. If you are clear about the basics of Glide Ajax, you can answer any question regarding this. So let's get started with this. Also, please subscribe to my channel if you are liking my content and please don't forget to hit the like button. So first of all, what is the definition of Glide Ajax API? So it is a class which allows execution of server side code from the client. So this is available on the client side scripting and you can call the server side code. For example, if you want to retrieve any value from the database through client side scripting, this is the best way to do that. It happens usually in the case when you don't know what kind of data will be required on the form at that point of time. So this is really an effective way. One of the best practices in service now. As well as you can pass some parameters using some name conventions. So there are two types of Glide Ajax. First is the asynchronous and the second one is synchronous. First of all asynchronous. So this sends parameters to the server which then does the processing so that the client does not wait for the result and a callback function is used to return the results. For example, you need some value on your form. You will run this asynchronous Glide Ajax and this will execute in the background and the front end user won't notice that if there is something running in the background, there will not be any hang state and for doing this, we will also use a callback function which will actually receive the feedback or the output from the script include and for that we have to use get xml method next is synchronous glide ajax and when you have a use case when you really need the results at that point of time and the execution of your form cannot further proceed without retrieving that value from the database you can use synchronous glide ajax and for that you have to use glide xml wait one thing to note if you are building a scoped application you cannot use glide xml wait or you cannot use synchronous glide ajax at all and whenever this is running the user will not be able to do anything on the form it will be kind of in a hang state so you have to be really careful about the user experience as well and if it is really needed only then use the synchronous glide ajax ServiceNow recommends that you should use Glide XML that is the asynchronous Glide Ajax because it enhances the user experience and it does not block your form. To build a Glide Ajax you need two things. First is the client script. So client scripts run on the browser or on the client and they are more user friendly. So that's why we use client scripts if you want to know more about client scripts please click on the top right corner and you will be able to see a playlist on the client scripts where I have explained each and every type of client scripts as well next is the script include so we will be calling script include functions from the client script so script includes are basically server side code which will fetch the data from the database or whatever your requirement is and then return the data to the client script so how do we use the glide ajax what is the syntax so on the client side script, we write like this. The first statement is where GA, we are declaring a variable of Glide Ajax class is equal to new Glide Ajax and we will be passing a parameter which is hello world. So this hello world is actually the name of the script include which you want to call. So automatically when you use Glide Ajax, ServiceNow knows what script include are you referring to when you declare like this the next line is how do we give the function name in the script include so that is done through ga that is the variable name in the line number one and add param that is add parameters and in the brackets the first parameter is sysparam underscore name so this is a reserved keyword in service now so you should not be passing any other parameter name or should not be using it again somewhere if you want to pass any additional parameters. So sysparam underscore name what does it mean for service now is that you are giving the function name which is defined in the script include. So 
let's take an example if the script include name is hello world and we have a function in that that is the demo function so we are referring to the function then if we want to pass some additional parameters to this function so you can use again ga dot add param sys param underscore and then after that you can define your own parameters so for example I have defined user underscore name you can define anything else as well for example sys param underscore ci underscore abc underscore xyz so it completely depends on you whatever the name you want to give and then the second parameter is what actually the value you want to send so for example I can hard code it to Hardit in a double quotes also pass the values from the form as well using g underscore form and you want to for example you want to send the ci value or the username value or anything and this is completely optional if your function is expecting a parameter only then you have to give this next is ga dot get xml function which we discussed in the previous slide so it is actually calling the demo function with the parameters hardit and it will use a callback function to return the results when they are ready so for that you will have to also define a callback function so this is how you can define a callback function I have named the function as hello world parse and you are actually getting the output in the answer variable so I can actually also display through an alert or for whatever function I need that output I can use that as an answer and now how we write the code in the script include in the script include first of all I have to give the function name which should be same as we passed in the glide ajax parameter so moving on the function name should be the same as we passed in the sysparam underscore name so that is demo function and this is how you actually define the function in a script include so demo function colon function and parenthesis after that for example if you want to retrieve the parameters which you have passed you can do it through this dot get parameter and then sysparam underscore user underscore name or underscore ci or whatever name you had mentioned that so it's a complete custom naming thing and then you can store that parameter in some variable and use that in your script include so I'll be creating a new asynchronous glide eject script where we, I will be passing the configuration item name from the incident form to the server side script and then I will display the asset tag in an alert message and also I will add a 10 seconds of sleep in there I'm adding this because you will know that even though it is happening in the background there is a sleep function of 10 seconds but the user won't be impacted with those sleep function and will be able to do multiple things like selection of drop down or maybe give change the short description or anything so he won't be blocked from doing anything so let's quickly jump to service now first of all I will go to client scripts I will click on new and then I will give a name I can say Ajax demo underscore client script I will give the table name as incident and then again I can choose the UI type as desktop and I will do it on the change type next I have to select the field name on what field actually it should apply so for example if I want to apply it on when the configuration item value changes I can use that so I will select configuration underscore item or the field name and then I will start writing the code here and I can say where GA equal to new glide Ajax and I will give the function name as hello world which we will write in a minute then I have to pass the parameter name or the function name I can do that using ga dot add param and then I will give the keyword to refer the function name so that is sys param underscore name and I will give the function name here which we will also write when we are writing the script include that is the demo function 
then I have to define parameters if I want to pass any so we are passing one in our use case that is sys param which is the keyword and then after underscore you can give anything you want so for example I will give only CI or I could have given underscore configuration underscore item or anything and for getting that value from the form I will use g underscore form dot get value and I will give the backend name of the field now g underscore form dot get value will actually fetch the sys id of the configuration item which we will select and we will then pass it to the script include and then we have to use the function ga.getXML and then ha we have to give the callback function name so which we will keep as hello world parse so you can name the callback function as you want and now I have to declare that callback function so this is defined like function hello world parse and then response and I will say where answer equal to response dot response response XML dot document element dot get attribute and I will give answer here so this is the attribute which will be returned from the script include that is the answer and what I will do I will just do an alert on this and I will say answer which is this variable and it will be alerted on your screen I will save this now I have to write a script include which I will open in a new tab and you have to remember you have to give the name as hello world so I will copy this name I will go into script includes and I will click new I will just copy paste the name hello world so as soon as I click on the tab button the API name is auto populated and some code is added please be sure to make this script include as client callable because if you don't do this this won't be called from client script so this script include won't allow any client calls I will then add a function demo function colon function and just to fix the syntax you have to give a comma here then we will write the script to fetch the asset tag of that particular CI for that I have to do a glide record where gr equal to new glide record and then I will give the table name so that is cmdb underscore CI if you are not aware about glide records please click on the top right corner to understand in depth about glide records then I will declare a variable to capture the sys id which we sent from the client script so for that we will use this dot get parameter and then sys param underscore ci so this is the parameter which we had defined in our client script so if you have seen my glide record video there are three ways to fetch that particular record so first one is gr dot add query the second one is add encoded query and if you already know the sys id it's best to use gr dot get and i will pass sys id here now that record will be loaded into the glide record and then all we have to do is pass back the asset tag so i will say return gr dot asset 
underscore tag which is the backend name of the asset tag field I will now save this one thing I remember now is you have to actually change the name of to cmdb underscore ci so that is the backend name of the configuration item field I will save this now I have to go to incident page to create a new incident or you can test it on existing incidents as well I will click on new and I will select one of the configuration items and it should show me the asset tag in the alert and you can see that asset tag has been printed in the alert message so if you remember in my PPT slide we had to add one sleep function as well so let me try adding that sleep function and you can see that user will be able to perform any other task while the sleep function is being executed so for that I will have to go to the script include and before returning this asset tag I will say gs dot sleep and I will add 10 seconds which is the 10,000 value and I will save this and as soon as it is saved I will refresh this tab and I will again try to select the configuration item and I will select the same and then you can also select the caller as well while the processing is happening at the back end so if, if I selected caller as Abraham Lincoln so it did not wait for this particular result to return and user was able to do other things on the form as well so this is the advantage of using asynchronous script now next is synchronous glide ajax we will again write the same kind of script but synchronous glide ajax do not require any callback function because you are doing actually glide xml wait we will take the same example here we will add 10 seconds and you will be able to see how this affect the user experience as well for synchronous glide ajax I will update the same client script for that if you remember I do not need any callback function and instead of get xml I have to use glide xml wait so it signifies that it will wait until the re result comes back from the script include and then I will print the message GA dot get answer which will actually fetch the parameter answer from the script include and then I will remove this callback function as well and I will save this and now we are ready to test our synchronous glide ajax we don't need to make any changes in the script include the only difference is that we don't have any callback function and we are using get xml wait to test that we will create a new incident form and again I will select the configuration item and maybe I will select the same CI and it is executing at the back end and I am trying to click any other field or any other drop down and it is not allowing me to do because it's a synchronous glide ajax and after 10 seconds when it returns the results the asset tag only after that I will be actually able to do any changes on the form now I am able to click this so that's why service now and the best practices are to use asynchronous glide ajax I hope you are clear about the basics of synchronous and gl asynchronous glide ajax and which one to use and in which condition so I hope you like this video please subscribe to my channel and let me know in comments if there are any questions